Hello, everybody. My name is Devin Pinches, and I am the membership director at Annie Mac Works. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the real estate staging designation, part one. Our hope is that with this incredible course, you can upgrade the service you provide to your clients. Whether you're working with a for sale by owner, an expired listing, or working with a family in your geographic farming area, we wanted to create a way for you to differentiate yourself, to stand out from other real estate agents in your community. This designation is brought to you by Annie Mac Home Mortgage and the Annie Mac Works Real Estate Productivity Platform. This three-part course was created by Russ and Carrie Fitzpatrick, the founders of the Real Estate Productivity Platform, as well as curriculum guidance from Haley Agostinelli. And lastly, we partnered with Victoria Guo, who runs a company known as The Staging Coach, who added further value to this class. In fact, Victoria does present part two of this designation, so you'll get to meet her later on. Everything you're going to need for the real estate staging designation, you will find at AnnieMacWorks.com forward slash ReseeWorks. There, you'll be able to recap the course in its entirety, but also download the staging handbook, which is the homework assignment that you'll need to complete in order to gain your staging designation. Today, I will be covering part one out of three for the real estate staging course. I will cover what makes real estate agents great, how they can stand out, and provide further value through staging, really using common sense to make staging recommendations in order to properly prepare a listing for the marketplace. And at the end of today, I'll briefly show you your home study and examples of how to complete it. So Russ and Carrie Fitzpatrick use staging as a way to gain access to, for example, a geographic farming area using one of their letter templates. Staging your governor's walk home means more money and a faster sale. We believe that this is true and our marketing materials have been proven to take listings in farming areas. Another example of our letter templates that again, you will have access to after you have passed your staging designation. Don't let your realtor sell you short on the price of your home. Don't reduce your price. We then developed door hanger templates, and these have been proven as drop-offs in the expired listing marketplace and or for sale by owners and farm areas. So let's get started. What is the big deal about staging? Well, if you ask a thousand home sellers what the most important thing to them is, they're gonna say one of three things. Highest possible price, least amount of time, and the least inconvenience to me. Now I'm gonna show you that staging is gonna help our sellers achieve those goals. When you properly prepare a listing for the marketplace and counsel your seller on how to properly stage, the evidence is irrefutable. The national average is a 6.9 increase in the sales price. If you wanna get your sellers the highest possible price, you have to properly prepare the listing for the marketplace. And you can find evidence of what I'm saying today if you go on the National um, Association of Realtors website, National Builders Association, or even turn on your television and watch any home and garden show that talks about properly preparing a listing for the marketplace. There is plenty of evidence about the fastest sale. So for example, houses sell 40% faster if staged properly and spend 40% fewer days on the market. I can guarantee you right now that there are some houses currently in your market that could sell almost immediately if they were staged. Now, a lot of real estate professionals tend to stay away from staging due to the major misconceptions they have. So one of the misconceptions they have is that staging is difficult. Guys, it does not take a degree from Cambridge in order to stage a house. Or it's an expensive undertaking and that your sellers are not gonna to wanna to do it all. Or number three, 
that you have to rent furniture to stage a property. Now, yes, this is a part of home staging, um, especially with vacant properties, yet that represents a small part of what staging is about. And then last but not least is that staging is a major project. Like it takes remodeling, repainting, recarpeting. Today, I'm going to show you that staging does not have to be difficult, expensive, that you do not have to rent furniture, or that it is a major project. All of the things that I'm going to show you today, this statistic observation is probably the most important. Now, the light gray section is proper preparation and common sense. And the darker section is all about remodeling or home repair. Now, when you think about staging residential real estate, the first thing that should come to your mind is lighten and brighten. That can be opening up the windows, the drapes, cleaning the screens and windows, really creating the ambiance. You can see that the average return of investment for lighten and brighten is the highest ROI of anything else you can do to a property. And 84% of agents who go and see a house recommend the action for a property to go onto the market. And number two, clean and declutter. That's about getting rid of those cobwebs, stains, removing the clutter. Again, this is very common sense. Number three, landscape and trim. That's really in regards to the outside of the property, um, you know, freshening up the mulch, the flower beds, um, power washing the driveway, right? Last but not least, staging furniture, which believe it or not, is usually the act of removing furniture or just changing the furniture around. Very rarely will you be renting furniture to stage a property. And if you start to apply common sense when staging a property, and really making these decisions can help maximize the sales price when you stop making it a complex undertaking. So what if with this course supplied by Annie Mac Home Mortgage and Annie Mac Works can make you more confident when approaching a for sale by owner? What if you had a way to make a seller feel like you're the best choice to list your house with? What if you can get into more living rooms, take more listings, and sell more houses as a real estate staging expert? I bet you and the Annie Mac Home Mortgage Professional who has sponsored you to take this class will be friends for a very, very long time. Now, before we dive into some examples of staging, I'd like to cover how agents have been prospecting and then how you can prospect differently. So what we've seen over the years in the real estate staging market about prospecting are these couple of examples here. You know, free CMA. How much is your home worth with a broker um, price's opinion? We see realtors telling sellers that they have free market data reports, neighborhood news, property reports. Uh, we see a lot of 60-day, 30-day sale guarantees. Um, if I can't sell home, I'll buy it. Very dangerous. <laughs> um, and a very popular one is, you know, I can guarantee you the highest sales price if you close by Thanksgiving, Christmas, before the kids go to school, right? And today, we want to invite you to start prospecting differently. And Russ and Carrie, the founders of Works, who have been in the real estate industry for over 35 years, have been prospecting this way for decades in South Florida. For example, they'll send a letter to an expired listing and say, don't reduce your price. Allow us to provide you with a free staging evaluation, an eight-page report valued at $600, absolutely free, with no obligation. And when you send that letter out to expired listings, you're going to get some phone calls back. When you knock on a door of an expired listing and say, I bet your agents have been telling you to drop your price, huh? Well, why don't I provide you 
with a free staging evaluation. And when I'm done, I bet you know that you don't have to reduce your price or reduce it as much as your other agents is telling you. You can tell them that you're going to help them make some common sense decisions in order to maximize the sales price. And from Russ and Carrie's experience, you'll be able to get into more living rooms if you stop talking about the things on the right and focus on the things on the left. So few agents are approaching clients from a certified staging perspective and say, you know, whether you list with me or not, I'm going to provide a staging evaluation absolutely free. And let me tell you, after that, they're, they're going to want to list with you. So the statistic observation that we went over earlier is important, um, but this is my favorite part um, with this staging designation, and that's going through property photos. Uh, so Russ and Carrie, they did a study of properties in South Florida, starting at four hundred thousand um, dollars, you know, ranging to up to about six hundred thousand dollars, and only went to MLS active listings. Um, you know, they eliminated the short sales and foreclosures. Um, so they were really looking for retail, equity-seeking sellers trying to achieve the highest price with a real estate agent professional that was hired to counsel them. So Russ and Carey uh, called the top listing agents in the community, um, you know, with national franchise brands, the larger independents, and gave them 24 hours notice before going to the property. Now, funnily enough, every agent in the study knew of Russ and Carey due to their success in the South Florida market, knowing that they would only bring a client that was ready, willing, and able to purchase. So a very, very high-level client. Now, again, Russ and Carey were looking for a retail equity seller, looking for the highest possible price, paying a full commission to the real estate professional and gave them 24 hours notice before they were to view the property. And the reason why I keep repeating myself in regards to 24 hours notice is the photographs I'm about to show you um, can be considered um, pretty shocking that the fact that Russ and Carrie gave the listing agent 24 hours notice. Real estate staging is not about a major expensive project, but moreover, CLR, calcium, lime, and rust. You can go to your local store and pick up a bottle of CLR for about maybe six to eight dollars. Staging isn't about renting furniture. It's about Coke. You can go to your local store, even your dollar store, and pick up a bottle. It's about bringing common sense decisions into staging. And with the pictures you're seeing here, you can see that their agent never approached their seller and made some helpful suggestions on how they can achieve the highest sales price. Russ and Carrie also notice a lot of wood rot, um, as you can see here on this door. This is the before and this is the after. Look at the difference, right? And guys, it's not about if fixing wood rot, it's when you're going to fix the wood rot. The potential buyer can view wood rot as if the house isn't being maintained properly, right? And addressing the common sense issues is going to be beneficial in the long run. Now, the bottom picture, uh, what you can't see is that there is a beautiful pool uh, behind the plant pot. And the plant pot is one of the first things you see when entering that pool space. This plant pot is filled to the brim with cigarette buds. Not only does that look unpleasant, but there was an overpowering smell where the consumer was distracted by that smell. 
Russ and Carrie, you know, showed a home that had a faucet outside that looked like this. Um, and a husband and wife were viewing the property. And the wife fell in love with the house and said, right, I want to put an offer in. And her husband turned around and said, absolutely not. We are not buying this house because it is riddled with mold. Now, how did he come to that conclusion, right? So he was looking at the outside of this faucet and came to the conclusion that water must have been dripping behind the wall. So that meant the entire house was filled with mold. Now, on the right-hand side, if they were to fix the drip, right, and obviously paint on top of it after it's been fixed, look at the difference that makes. Maybe even at that point, the husband and wife would have put an offer in. One common sense decision to repair the drip and paint it would have made all the difference with the consumer. Russ and Carrie also saw, you know, a lot of um, flower beds that needed updating, old mulch, um, and garden hoses laying around. Now, this palm tree could possibly get flagged by an appraiser. And if the appraiser does flag it, the buyer and buyer's agent are going to call for that tree to be removed professionally. And that could take anywhere between, I don't know, maybe $800 to $1,200. But if you and your seller decided to remove the tree beforehand, you probably could have had the local landscaper come around and remove it for a couple hundred dollars. So again, guys, all of these staging suggestions and recommendations are common sense. Now, a few things to address um, in these photos. One, we have chemicals outside, doesn't look pleasant and uh, not being stored properly. Uh, we see a weed being grown underneath the pipe and the uh, outlet socket. And then lastly, we see the uh, child's bike outside the property. Now, when you show a house, right, you want to make the property the best it has ever looked, right? So storing those chemicals, removing the weeds, uh, putting the child's bike away, that's important, right? And again, common sense decisions. During their study um, across active listings in the MLS, you know, there were projects um, that homeowners had started and not finished. Um, they saw bugs in the fluorescent lighting. Up here, this is a three-car garage, um, but you might not know that because it is filled to the brim with clutter. And at this point, it just absolutely kills the mojo of the three-car garage, right? You can't imagine that garage filled with your three cars, right? And again, going off the topic of projects that weren't finished, we see a paint job that wasn't completed. Um, we also see some stains on the garage floor. Now, bathrooms. The photo at the top, and again, guys, bear in mind, Russ and Carrie gave 24 hours notice. Now, when we walk into this bathroom as a potential home buyer, we're not looking at the, you know, the gorgeous mirror or the granite tops or the window, right? We're now looking at the products, right? Ooh, what do they have, right? We're looking at the lotions, the perfumes, the soaps. Ooh, that smells nice. Maybe I should go purchase that, right? This is not effective for selling real estate. And the photographs below it um, is obviously after removing that clutter. But when you listen to Victoria Guo's part two of this course, you're going to see that even in the two pictures below, there is still too much personal property, right? Less is more. And Victoria Guo, in part two, will go over some of these rules of thumb. 
we also saw minor repairs that could have been addressed before showing the property, right? So finishing off those floorboards, um, mashing at the tap to its uh, appropriate color, right? Um, we definitely found that homeowners place objects in random places. <laughs> um, as a staging expert, again, you would make these recommendations um, to say, hey, let's let's remove the clutter from the window. Let's see if we can match the um, tap to the rest of the faucet. Let's finish up those floorboards, right? The first thing I saw in this picture is how dark the room is. Lighten and brighten should be the first call of action. The second is too much personal property on the nightstand. Um, and lastly, the little lamp plug-in socket um, where you can see the wire. Um, let's just remove that, right? Possibly we can plug it in uh, behind the nightstand um, or just simply remove it for the showing. And again, guys, common sense decisions, right? Um, you know, in the early 90s, um, a lot of homes were built, you know, with the electrical or battery operated smoke detectors that would go off, right, 100 times in the middle of the night. And homeowners would just rip them off, um, but forget to pop them back in, right? And so you can see it doesn't look very pleasant. Um, and again, wood rock, guys, we were constantly seeing this. And just look at the difference from before with the wood rot and then after it just looks much cleaner now this is one of the largest bedrooms um that carrie and russ came across during their study i believe it was something like 1250 square feet um, a beautiful space now the first thing they noticed was how dark it was um but mostly that's because of the uh paint color so if repainting wasn't an option, what they could do is, you know, let's open up the blinds, clean the windows, clean the screens, right? Secondly, too much personal property in the night tables, um, even on the love seat, as you can see. And lastly, uh, the bed isn't made. So all of these factors take away from the bedroom. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but on the right hand side on the bottom of your screen, um, this was a bathroom and um, it was beautiful. It had granite um, and marble, but as you can see, there's a dead lizard <laughs> in the corner of this picture. Um, and yes, guys, sometimes you can't help lizards coming in, especially if you're in South Florida, right? We've all seen a few running around our property. Um, but before somebody walks through the house, do a little check through, walk through, right? That could have been avoided um, if you saw it and you could be able just to remove the dead lizard. Um, on the left hand side, another picture of a bathroom, guys. And again, what are we seeing, right? We can see his toothbrush. We know what deodorant is used. We can see all of their medications. Um, again, at this point, our seller is becoming concerned with the products rather than the bathroom. Um, and guys, with the real estate staging workbook that you can download for the homework assignment, it is going to provide you with a step-by-step -step checklist of um, what to look out for when staging each room. Um, there was a book written by Tom Peters and Robert Waterman Jr known as In Search of Excellence. And it said, a coffee stain on an airline passenger seat tells the passenger that the jet engines are not maintained properly. Now, how fascinating is that quote, right? The passenger questioned if the engine was maintained properly because of the coffee stain on their seat. The reason why I bring this up is let's take a look at the condensation on the vent. Now, what does this image tell the potential home buyer? It might tell them that the home wasn't properly maintained and that the AC unit needs to be replaced. Now, when the homeowner sees this, right, when the seller sees this, they're just thinking, oh, 
just need to replace the filter, right? But who's going to win this battle, right? The buyer will. Because the buyer is going to go, no, thank you. The whole AC unit needs to be replaced. So I'm just going to move on to another property. So again, guys, when you are a listing agent, you are there to counsel your seller. So when you walk through a property and make these suggestions, this is going to impact the viewing of the house and the price of the house. It's honestly incredible to see what staging and common sense decisions can do for your sellers. Now, I'm sure we've all done this ourselves, right? Accidentally knocked a candle off and now we have a wax stain on the carpet. So there's a little known secret that, you know, if you grab a grocery bag, get your iron on medium heat and use circular motions, it's then going to suck off the wax from the carpet. Um, please don't do this yourself um, as you can open yourself up to liability if you were to damage or burn the carpet in any way. So you can uh, suggest to the seller that they do this. Now, one of the top agents uh, that Russ and Carrie know, every listing appointment he goes to, he brings um, flowering plants and mulch. And he has a handyman that performs this for him. Um, and it's, his, it's almost like his trademark, right? Um, and imagine that if in these pictures, the seller was to add fresh mulch, we replaced, you know, some of the river stone, plucked out some of those weeds, got some bleach, scrubbed the wall, the difference it would make if you made those suggestions to the seller. If you advise and counsel your seller, your profession is upgraded. Not just you personally, but the industry as a whole. Now, again, guys, Russ and Carrie gave the seller's agent 24 hours notice before they were to view the property. Uh, this was a guest bedroom in a beautiful home. Um, and a couple of things you notice is one, the bed isn't made, doesn't um, really allow the potential home buyer to envision, you know, themselves there, envision what that room could be. And then we have clutter on the nightstand. And right outside of this um, guest bedroom was a door to the pool area. And again, you open the door and see clutter, right? We could have removed the speakers from the barbecue. We could have placed the children's toys and towels in a bag away before the viewing. And these are easy fixes for a staging expert. Uh, this was the pool area outside of that guest bedroom. And when you look at the stain on that pool, what do you think, right? You immediately, as the buyer, go to, oh, that's going to need a Mars site job, right? It's probably a $4,000 um, expense. And as it turns out, guys, it was just a stain, right? The seller could have just taken the brush, given it a good scrub, or asked the pool company to come by. But again, the potential home buyer doesn't know that, right? They immediately go to almost like a doom and gloom mindset. So if the seller was just to scrub that off, maybe the potential home buyer would have put an offer down, right? Pets, our beloved pets, right? We know that pets, unfortunately, have a negative effect on the value of real estate faster than anything. Whether it's obstructing the showing, pet odor, clutter. Um, when you're listing your house for sale, what you need to take into consideration is really how the clutter, odor, and even how the pet behaves during a showing can distract a buyer from purchasing your home. So we've got some before and after pictures for you. Um, Russ and Carrie went into this property and asked the seller and the homeowner if they could um, perform the act of staging so that they could see the difference. So one of the first things you notice in the before photos is how dark the room was. 
Um, there's also personal belongings on the nightstand. We have a dressing gown on the bed and even an ironing board open, um, blocking the windows. Um, as you can see, the after photos, look at the difference of that room. Does not look entirely different. Um, and as you can see, Russ and Carrie opened up those blinds, right? Now we can see the pool. They've made the beds. Um, popped away the ironing board, right? Um, and, you know, as I said with the pool, having a bedroom overlook the pool outside area is a huge selling point to any property. Um, and as you can see in the before photos on each side, you couldn't even see the pool because the ironing board was in the way and the curtains were closed. So again, these changes, common sense, and also don't cost you a penny to do so, right? Now, when addressing the outside of the property, there are definitely some things to take into consideration. So with this photo, for example, some of the things I notice is there is a old welcome mat by the front door. I see the walkway that needs to be pressure cleaned um, and possibly some weeds that need to be removed and fresh mulch added. Um, and with those little changes, the front of the property would look completely different. And guys, these are the skills that set you apart as a real estate professional. If you walked away uh, today <clears throat> from this class with the 10 equity enhancers of staging and were able to bring that knowledge with you to a listing appointment, I would be thrilled. Um, with these equity enhancers, you will be adding further value to who you are as a real estate professional. So let's go through them, right? Number one, a new welcome mat. You can get these at any store, right? TJ Maxx, Marshalls, even Home Depot. Um, and you know, they range from what? Maybe eight to $12. Um, and we would advise you to place these welcome mats at every entrance of the house, right? The front door, uh, where the garage enters into the laundry room, right? You, uh, you get the gist. Number two, uh, screen removal and spotless windows, um, lighten and brighten, right? Um, <clears throat> if you also could convince your seller, you know, with those larger windows to remove the screens for house viewings, um, it's really going to make a big difference. Number three, uh, caulk is your friend. You can go to any store and purchase some. Number four, remove clutter. Um, enlisting decor, less is more. Five, dog less showings. Yes, we all love our pets. Um, however, like I said earlier, pets can have a negative impact on real estate. Um, so if possible, your pets do not need to be there for the showings. Um, you know, go take them outside, go have a walk, go to the park, um, pop them in your car and have a drive around. Number six, um, flower beds. Um, you can just see the difference that flowers make on the outside of the property. So just make sure to really freshen them up. Number seven, fresh grade A cypress mulch or any other. You know, if your sellers are using river rock, stones, mulch, whatever they are using for their ground cover, make sure it's fresh. Eight, wood rot and rust. It's not if, but when, right? Very important. Number nine, lighten and brighten every room. As you've seen in this presentation, opening up those blinds, cleaning the windows makes a huge difference. And last but certainly not least, no smoke, right? So uh, to get rid of the smell of cigarettes and even cigars, you can pop to Home Depot and purchase the borax bags um, and you know just place them under the furniture and I tell you the smell is gone so um, a great little trick for you if you don't already know that um, and again this is what we call the top 10 equity enhancers of staging um, please feel free to just uh, take a picture on your phone or screenshot it 
um, so that you can bring this knowledge with you to your next listing appointment. So home study guides. Um, there are some required materials that you will need in order to complete the homework assignment. Um, digital camera or phone, you know, a device that lets you take some good quality uh, photographs. Number two, an active listing or a friendly residential property. And number three, you'll need your real estate staging expert booklet, uh, which you can find on animacworks.com forward slash works or the Animac Home Mortgage Professional that you are connected to has the ability to email it to you. So the staging booklet is really designed for you to be able to walk through a residence without feeling awkward, right? And being able to have those tough conversations with your sellers. Um, it guides you through uh, each room, even starting from the outside, right? So curb appeal. Then we go into kitchen, living areas, bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, and it allows you to ask yourself and the seller simple questions that have a yes or no answer. And after walking through the bedrooms, bathrooms, and living room areas, we will then ask you to tell us your highest priority recommendations, additional recommendations, and ideal recommendations. So what we've done here is just give you uh, a few examples for each of those recommendations. So we'll start with the priority ones, right? Those can range from zero to $100, right? So for example, cleaning, uh, decluttering, popping away those uh, personal items. Moving on to additional recommendations. These can price between $100, maybe to $500. Um, and these are, you know, those sound decisions that can help properly prepare the listing for the marketplace. And then last but not least would be the ideal recommendations, right, in our perfect world scenario. Um, and these could range, you know, from $500 onwards. Maybe it's the pool needs to be remarcited or, you know, the tiles um, in the kitchen need to be redone. Now, when you're going through the assignment, what you have the camera for is to take photographs of the staging recommendations. Uh, we're not looking for you to actually perform any of the staging recommendations. Um, <clears throat> so when you submit your homework assignment, so that being the booklet, the photographs, and many, you know, and maybe some extra notes, you would send this to service at animacworks.com. Um, and you can send this to us, you know, in an attachment, a zip file, Google file, uh, whatever is easy for you. So after you've completed your assignment um, and sent it to service at animacworks.com, we would like to invite you to come back for part two uh, of this course with Victoria Guo. Um, and it really helps you learn how to get your consumers to the next level of preparation. Um, and after part two, we would then like to ask you back for part three. And this is really how you market yourself um, using your new staging designation. And after completing um, all three parts, you then have the ability to use the logos, the marketing materials, um, and the staging booklet for your next listing appointment. Um, and with the marketing materials, guys, you will have the ability to edit them, right, with your information and your headshot. So everyone, I'd like to sincerely thank you for your time and joining me for the real estate staging designation part one. Um, please thank your Animac Home Mortgage Professional that is providing this incredible program to you. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to the Animac Works team. Again, you can contact us via email, service at animacworks.com. We hope you join us for part two and part three and earn your real estate 